What's going on, y'all? We are back with another one. We got How Good Was Jerry Rice, actually. Another one by Blitz. Um, I mean, obviously, I know Jerry Rice was the GOAT receiver. Outside of that, I can't act like I just watched Jerry Rice highlights, you know, before my time, you know. Deion Sanders can't act like I just watched his highlights. I just know that um he's looked at as arguably one of the best um cornerbacks of all time uh the best cornerback i've ever watched in my era is darrell revis and the best receiver i've watched um is uh that's very tough i'm not gonna lie because when we get to the receiver position it gets crazier and crazier um, uh, probably my favorite, one of my favorites to watch, and this is a biased answer, is Andre Johnson, because I'm a Texans fan. Uh, but when we talk about dominance, Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, um, uh, and right now, you know, we got some guys who are. It's getting it's getting crazier and crazier, bro. I ain't gonna lie at the receiver position. But let's get into this bit, man. The all time receiver. What goals have you set for yourself? And number one, I would like to be the all time receiver. If fate hadn't intervened, he may never have played or It's actually kinda wild to say I wanna be the all time receiver. Like, you know, whether he meant yards or literally be the best receiver ever. Um, I mean it's a great goal, but it's wild to like have that as a goal and actually Achieved that goal. That's wild. Organized football. You went to a college you've never heard of, and yet you went on to live in the end zone on Sundays and atop the NFL record books forever. So, just how good was Jerry Rice actually? While most future NFL players spent countless nights as a kid dreaming about making it to the league, that was the furthest thing from Rice's mind. Growing up in a Mississippi town with a population of just 600 people, he was the sixth of eight mm. children. You know, I think uh, growing up in Crawford, Mississippi is just like all family. Everybody, they were very close. With eight kids to provide for, Rice's parents had to work nonstop to just put food on the table. Mrs. Rice would clean the houses of rich families. While I wonder if that was actual picture of it of his parents or did they just find like some a stock photo uh if, the, if that is his parents they they're a lot darker than him well, Mr. if not then it's kind of wild in addition to a handful of other random jobs in an effort not really. to chip in jerry and his brothers would often pick mm -hmm. corn cotton carrots and bale hay well it was very tight but i think it told us uh, the meaning of hard work and uh, dedication you know, we didn't have everything, and we had to wait out our turn for clothes, for everything. By the time he was in high school, Rice's focus was so far from one day making the NFL that he still hadn't even played organized football. He loved playing it outside with friends and watching it on TV, but his mother thought that it was too rough for him to join his school's team. Then, on one random school day, Rice was doing something he shouldn't have been, and everything changed. His school's assistant principal caught him and a friend skipping class, so Rice fled the scene like his life depended on it. The assistant principal was so blown away by Rice's speed that he told the football coach about it the coach immediately offered rice a spot on the team that is wild <laughs> his mother still what a way to join it join the team that's wild didn't want him to play however the more she fought it the more her son was determined to make it happen so she eventually gave in and rice's football playing career was officially set to begin after i got disciplined then the principal wanted me to go out for the football team and i yeah. were you great right away it. no not at all Every day that summer at 7 a.m., he and one of his brothers joined his father laying bricks for eight-hour shifts on scorching hot days. Jerry said, My brother and I, we had developed this technique where you throw the bricks up, they were separated, and I was snatching them in the air. Doing this over and over again sharpened Jerry's hand-eye coordination and increased his hand strength. He also said the experience taught him the true meaning of hard work. We had a responsibility, and you had to... I guess that is his parents, but no, that's definitely, definitely hard work. Uh, how old did they say he was? One of his brothers joined his father laying bricks for eight-hour shifts. Not at all. 
Every day that summer at 7 a.m., he and one of his brothers so he was his still father laying bricks for eight-hour shifts on middle school hot days. Jerry at this said, point in time. My brother and I, we had developed this technique where you throw the bricks up, they were separated, and I was snatching them in the air. Doing this over and over again sharpened Jerry's hand-eye coordination and increased his hand strength. He also said the experience taught him the true meaning of hard work. We had a responsibility, and you had to live up to it. You had to help generate and bring money into the house. And as if those daily grueling shifts weren't enough, after work, Rice would get dropped off for a two-hour football practice. And once that was over, he'd then run five miles to get home. Rice said he wasn't the most gifted or talented player. He would run five team, miles to get home. None of his teammates did. And oh my gosh. But he, he was doing stuff that was making him a better athlete indirectly. You know, like kids his age are not running five miles. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure his conditioning was 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 amazing and then kids his age are not i think they said it was his brother catching the bricks no he said he was catching the bricks too but kids his age you're not doing stuff like that so that's uh, that's crazy appreciation for and a love of hard work by the start of his junior season rice was in unbelievable physical shape and ready to finally show the world what he could do on the gridiron he played on both sides of the ball as a wide receiver and defensive back. But because his school was so small, most of his stats weren't officially recorded. But according to a sports journalist from back then, Rice, as a senior, caught 50 passes for 30 touchdowns. But whatever the actual numbers were, he did enough to earn yeah. himself a Mississippi All-State selection and attention from major colleges. Over 40 D1 schools contacted Rice, including his dream school of Mississippi State University. But none of them believed in him enough to offer a scholarship. The only program that did that was Mississippi Valley State, a Division I AA school. Reflecting on why he eventually committed to them, Rice said, Mississippi Valley sent up a coach and I had a chance to have a conversation with him and shake his hand. That goes a long, long way towards making you feel you can really trust someone. Rice also explained, at the time... Man, you know, when I saw the Ed Reed video the other day, it opened my eyes like the 40-yard dash does not determine anything about a football player um and I, I i didn't know jerry went to a small school so you know it's like these dudes really beat the odds you know what i mean like it happens it really does you know it's crazy And they were also throwing the ball about 90% of the time. So it was a great opportunity for me. They assured me that the ball was going to be in the air coming my way. And then it was up to me to prove to everyone that I could be a professional athlete. He arrived on campus. He bet on himself. Mississippi Valley right for believing in him. As a freshman, he caught 30 passes for 428 yards and two touchdowns. Rice followed this up the next season by catching 66 passes for 1,133 yards and seven touchdowns. It was a very solid start to his collegiate career. Playing at such a small program, Rice knew that he would have to put up eye-popping numbers to get the attention of teams and scouts at the next level. His junior season would most likely make or break his chances at going pro. The task was even tougher for him than people realized, as he said the food given to him at school was not enough for a growing man. Times were so hard for Rice that he often had to rely on his friends for food. But this lack of nourishment never stopped Rice from getting in extra work with his quarterback. The duo became inseparable, as they would get in hours of additional reps to Together late at night. That season, their chemistry on the field was impossible to miss. Rice set NCAA records for most receptions with 102 and receiving yards with 1,450 on his way to being named an All American. That's a season. In case that didn't send a loud enough message to the That's NFL, a season. Rice somehow managed to take his game to another level as a senior. He broke both of his records with 103 receptions for 1,682 yards and set another one with 27 receiving touchdowns. Oh Having my gosh. Oh, oh, I need to see if his college highlights exist because uh, 27 touchdowns is unfathomable. I mean, I, I guess I could see it at the college at the college level. Like. If a guy is just that good in the red zone, you can spam him. I mean, he went to the school with the intention on, you know, being thrown the ball consistently. But like. I mean, I guess. Out of a hundred, out of a hundred and three catches, twenty-seven of them are, are touchdowns. That's not bad. It's just not normal at all. It's not normal. 
Having been named an All-American again, Rice shattered every Mississippi Valley receiving record, finishing for 301 receptions for 4,693 yards and 50 touchdowns. During his collegiate career, he broke 18 NCAA 27 records. 27 is crazy. It didn't matter what school he played at, there was simply no debating that Jerry Rice belonged in the NFL. Legendary 49ers coach Bill Walsh fell in love with him watching his college highlights. Walsh's team was coming off two Super Bowl victories in the previous four seasons, and he believed Rice would keep them at the top. Walsh described him as a swift, smooth player who's got great instincts running with the ball, going to the ball, and catching in a crowd. This analysis inspired San Francisco to get aggressive on draft day and trade their first, second, and third round picks for New England's first and third round picks. So, with the 16th pick of the 1985 draft, the 49ers did something Rice never thought would happen. They drafted him. San Francisco 49ers select 16th pick in the first round. Wide receiver Jerry Rice. Mississippi. See, I didn't know that either. I didn't know he got drafted to the uh, Niners after they already won two Super Bowls. It's pretty far. Um, Y'all, who was their receiver prior to him getting there? Because I'd never heard of another receiver, another 49ers receiver that was just going crazy, you know? I'm, I don't know the history of the Niners, so y'all y'all enlighten me in the comment section, please. Valley. Years later, he admitted, to be honest, I never thought I was going to get drafted. Heading into his rookie what? season, Rice was determined to reward the 49ers for taking a chance on him. He also wanted to show everyone that he belonged in the league, and his insane college numbers weren't just the product of poor competition. But what ended up happening was Rice was putting too much pressure on himself. In his first 13 games, he only had 28 receptions for 493 yards and two touchdowns. Looking back on this slow start, Rice said, I think I wanted to prove myself so much that I overdid it. I was dropping footballs, and then the media got down on me, and the fans started booing me. While this treatment would have caused some players to spiral out of control, it was a wake-up call for Rice. He tapped into his old ways. Yeah, you know, what was so funny is this made me think about Devontae Adams. And then this popped up. And I'm like, he kind of resembled Devontae Adams a little bit. But uh, definitely uh, reminded me of Devontae. Because I think he was struggling with drops at the beginning of his career. And uh, I think like his rookie season. And uh, turned it around and consistent, Mr. Consistent. This treatment would have caused some players to spiral out of control. It was a wake-up call for Rice. He tapped into his old ways by becoming the first player on the field for practice and the last one to leave. And everything came together in week 14 against the Rams, when Rice exploded for 10 receptions, 241 yards, and a touchdown. Two weeks later in the regular season finale, he had seven receptions for 111 yards, bringing CBS announcer Pat Summerall to boldly declare, He is going to be a great receiver, barring injury he's going to be one of the best to ever play it was an extremely strong finish to his rookie campaign and he's going to be one of the best to ever play it was an extremely strong finish to his rookie campaign and generated a ton of buzz ahead of year two everyone was anxious to see whether it was a fluke or a sign of things to come the 1986 season would provide an emphatic answer to that question. Rice went out and led the league in receiving yards with 1,570 and touchdown receptions with 15. He showed flashes of brilliance, as there seemed to be nothing that he couldn't do. Rice had the ability to catch a short pass and then make defenders miss, beat them deep with his speed and route running, or outjump defenders to win contested balls. As a first-team All-Pro, he was now filled with confidence. Rice built off his brilliant season with what was possibly the greatest season ever by a receiver. In the strike-shortened 87 season, Rice managed to rack up 1,078 yards and a league record 22 receiving touchdowns in just 12. I was about to say, when he showed the 1,000 yards, I'm like, mm, the 22 touchdowns. That's actually crazy. I I'm pretty sure that's not that doesn't exist. He's probably the, the only receiver ever to get 20 receiving touchdowns in college in the season and in the NFL in the season. I would not be surprised. Games. To this day, the league record is only 23 receiving touchdowns, which Randy Moss did in 16 games. Rice had officially established himself mm, as one of the boy next Randy. pieces of the league and was named Offensive Player of the Year, becoming the first wide receiver to ever take home the award. Having already filled his resume with a handful of personal accolades, the only thing missing was team success. 
But in 1988, Rice set out to check that box off. He put together another dominant regular season, which was good enough for his third straight first-team All-Pro nomination. That postseason, he put San Francisco on his back and helped them to a Super Bowl appearance with 10 receptions for 194 yards and five touchdowns in the team's two wins. Then, on the game's uh. biggest stage, Rice etched his name into NFL history. While leading the 49ers to another ring and his first, he set two Super Bowl records with 11 receptions for 215 yards. The throw is to Rice. Touchdown! Rice becoming just the third wide receiver ever to be named Super Bowl MVP capped off one of the most dominant postseason stretches ever by a receiver. Feeling on top of the world, things somehow only got better for him. The following season, Rice led the league in receiving yards and touchdowns with 1,483 and 17 before winning. He led the league with 1,400 yards. It's so it's so different now, bro. I guess it's just. So I guess when he had that 1,078 yards, that, that was considered good at that time. 1,400, like, I don't know. I mean, when was the last time a receiver led the league in receiving with 1,400 yards? I don't feel like looking it up, but Tariq was on pace to break 2K this year, even though he didn't, but he was on pace to it, you know? his second ring and again he rose to the occasion in the super bowl with seven receptions for 148 yards and three touchdowns boys dominant in the playoffs Rice won the league's unofficial triple crown for receiving by leading all three main categories with 100 receptions for 1502 yards and 13 touchdowns realistically oh. rice couldn't have scripted his first six seasons any better he already had enough accomplishments to last an entire career. By this point, it was just accepted that Rice was unguardable. No matter what scheme an opposing defense concocted, he was going to get open. And over the next four seasons, Rice mm. only continued his reign of terror on opposing defenses. During that stretch, he amassed a staggering 374 receptions for 5,409 yards and 52 touchdowns, leading the league in receiving yards and touchdowns twice, respectively, and adding another offensive player of the year award and to cap it off in 1994 rice brought home his third ring while making more history just as he had done in his first two super bowls rice made it look like he was playing against a jv team he finished with 10 receptions for 149 yards and three touchdowns this took his combined totals in that particular game to it's his like um it's his like kelsey receptions for five kelsey kelsey be killing the postseason i mean uh before before kelsey a consistent postseason player was um Julian Edelman. Man, that'd be that was a guy who would show up. But uh I'm trying to think before that. I mean maybe before that, I don't know. I don't know who was the most consistent postseason receiver. 512 yards and seven touchdowns were all career Super Bowl records. As people seem to take Rice's greatness for granted at this point, it would take him doing something truly special to surprise anyone. And that's exactly what he did during the 95 season, as he set a league record for most receiving yards in a single season with 1,848. It wasn't until 1997, at 35 years old, when Rice started to look human for the first time. He had, he's 35 and 97. Hold on. Something truly special to surprise anyone. And that's exactly what he did during the 95 season. As he set a league record for most receiving yards in a single season with 1,848. It okay, so that was 95. 97, he was 35. So he was 33 and had 1,800 yards. That's That's crazy. That's crazy. The, the, the receivers, that, that's why I, I respect, I still respect receivers like Keenan Allen. Um, uh, I, I mean, obviously, Devontae Adams. I don't think Devontae is over 30 yet. I could be wrong, but uh, it's, there's somebody else that I'm thinking of. Is just the name not coming to mind. But uh, specifically, let's, let's just stick on Keenan Allen. Um, a receiver whose game is not predicated on elite athleticism is he's very skilled very technical and i think a player like him barring injury can play for a very long time it's kind of equivalent in my opinion to steph curry in the nba 
if Steph want to keep playing, he low key can keep playing for a while because his game is not predicated on being that physical player, you know, you know, banging in the paint and, you know, uh, drawing a lot of contact consistently, you know. Um, Keenan is more of a uh, not finesse. I don't really know how to describe it, but I just, again, being healthy, that style of receiver I can see playing for a very long time. I mean, also Tyreek Hill, I can see Tyreek playing for a while, but I mean, um, mm, I feel like you don't see it as well. You do, you do kind of see it with speedsters. Deshaun Jackson lasted for a while, but he just wasn't like. Mm, I don't want to. I want to. I don't even want to say that because I want to discredit Deshaun Jackson. It wasn't until 1997, at 35 years old, when Rice started to look human for the first time since his rookie season. The 49ers season opener, he tore his ACL Ooh. and MCL. And as oh, unbelievable yeah. as this sounds, Rice, up until that point, had never missed a game throughout high school, college, or the NFL. And while this mm. injury should have forced him to miss the entire season, Rice ignored doctor's orders so that he could return in time for Joe Montana's jersey retirement. In that week 16 game, Rice electrified the crowd by catching a touch what so he came back in the same season he tore his acl ignored doctor's orders so that he could return in time for joe montana's jersey retirement in that week 16 game rice electrified the crowd by catching a touchdown in his return however there was a cruel twist as he came down with the ball he cracked his left patella this time his season was officially over coming off these serious injuries people began to wonder how much he had left in the tank and heading into his 14th season at the age of 36 this speculation was more than fair but if anyone could find their way back it would be rice the workhorse. He grinded all offseason, rehabbing his knee and trying to regain his form. In yet another chapter where Rice defies all logic, he went out and became the oldest receiver ever to record a thousand yard season. He followed this up with two more solid seasons before the unthinkable happened. Having suffered two Crazy. consecutive losing seasons, the 49ers decided it was time for a rebuild and said goodbye to the longtime face of their franchise. After being released in the 2001 offseason, Rice signed with the Raiders. Now 39 years old, with 16 seasons under his belt, he should have been running on empty. Instead, Rice managed to do things that only he could do. He put together back-to-back 1,000-yard -back campaigns and led the Raiders to their first Super Bowl appearance in nearly 20 years. That is crazy. That is crazy to play for <laughs> such a long time i had conditioned my body in a way that i could play for a long time but for the first time in his career rice came up short in the big game despite his 77 yards and a touchdown the raiders lost to the buccaneers that season he was named an all pro and pro bowler at wow years old, oh my god accomplishment for a wide receiver after a frustrating 2003 season and start to 2004 rice demanded it I, I could just imagine like it obviously it's different with Tom Brady because he's a quarterback. So it's gonna be bigger. But I could I could imagine this. Like, you know, a rec it, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine a receiver being that good right now. Like somebody coming out of a receiver playing until they're forty years old and making all pros and pro bowls. But again, you know, I guess he, he was like their Tom Brady, you know, in that era. To trade. Six games into that year, he went to Seattle in exchange for a seventh round pick. But Rice couldn't really find his footing there and left during the following offseason to sign with the Broncos. However, he never wound up playing a snap for Denver and retired prior to the start of the 2005 oh, wow. season. I'm done. I'm looking forward to the next phase of my life now. On his way to being named first team all pro 10 times, Rice led the league in receiving yards and touchdowns six times respectively. And when it was all said and done, he owned virtually every significant NFL receiving record. Some of the more notable career ones were receptions with 1,549, receiving yards with 22,895, 1,000 yard receiving seasons with 14, and total touchdowns with 208. To this day, Rice still owns NFL records for most career receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Nobody has even come close to some of these, with Rice having over 5,000 more. Hmm. That's wild. You know, I felt like Larry Fitz could have kept playing, but 
I mean, I don't really know what happened with that. But at the, at at the time, like twenty twenty, I feel like he's he he still had juice in the tank. But you know, um, you could only you know, if, I don't know if it was injuries or just his desire to play just just wasn't there. But from what I had seen of him, I definitely thought he can he can still still play a little bit. Randy played. It's ninety-eight to twelve. Uh, he, this is a gap, dude. I ain't gonna lie though. Um, who y'all think? Who y'all think has the most realistic of the receivers right now? I th- I think we could assume Justin Jefferson. I think he is the only assumption. But of the receivers right now, who do you think has the most realistic opportunity of catching Mr. Rice in yards? But then again, it might not be Justin, you know? It might be, uh, I don't know. It might be Keon Coleman. <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, you, you never know, though. It, it, it could be one of the young guys, you know? But again, like I said, nah. Let me, let me stick stick to the first question. Who right now has the most realistic opportunity to to be uh, the next goat receiver, and possibly, let's say, possibly pass up Larry Fitz. More yards than the next closest person, and forty-one more touchdowns. Mm. Oh boy, Randy Moss was a touchdown machine. Gosh. T.O. as well. From the eye test to his individual records to his team's success, there is no debating Jerry Rice as the greatest wide receiver of all time, nor his spot on football's Mount Rushmore for all players, regardless of position. Oh, no, I got I to give him the, the Mount Rushmore of all players. Bro made a first-team All-Pro and a Pro Bowl at 40 years old. Yeah, he got it, he got it in my book. Yeah, he up there with Brady. I don't know who else to put up there, but both of them up there for sure. Y'all let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Stay tuned. Stay blessed.